Welcome back. It's part three of the darkroom timer. And this time we're going to optimize the code, get an enclosure, put it together, put the beeper, a lot to go on here. But finally we're coming to the end. So I've got everything set up. I've got the timer set up. Uh, I haven't got my enclosure printed. I'm going to do that in a few days, but I want to see how this thing works. And I'm going to go through a strip test. So I took my bike across town. Uh, one of the things with Graz is it's quite nice to get get around on the bike and at this time of year it's only about 28 degrees and it's a good reason to get out on the bike. Uh, my goal was to go over to 3D Druck or uh, 3D Print Graz who were going to print out my case uh, or my enclosure for the darkroom timer which I got designed. I think they were on holidays, um, but let's try again. But it was a good chance to just enjoy the nice weather and get out and about. The darkroom timer has been quite a long project for me. Uh, a perfect project for anyone who has uh, very little time on their hands and can just do things in piecemeal, especially the electronics and the programming, because that's the idea, is to get this uh, timer put together relatively simple that anyone can do it and I'm hoping to kind of put a kit together and put it on Etsy and this is a design I found in Thingiverse for the TM 1638 board which looks pretty good then I extended it got it extended got some buttons stuck onto it uh, let's hope this prints out well and here it is in Cura, uh, which is an open source software to just check if your design will print well and you can simulate it. And it looks pretty okay. This is the top panel. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here and have a look at those buttons and see if they will come out. Uh, of course, it's all gonna be one color, probably in black or red. Um, yeah, that's, let's see how this looks like in reality. So after I've optimized the code, fix all the bugs, and well, there's probably some more bugs, um, but it's certainly a lot more stable than it was and some nice cleanups. So I'm gonna let AI do its magic using this plugin in Visual Studio Code called Continue. It's free, it's open source, and it was a bit of fun to use. Nothing too serious here. Uh, I wouldn't put too much faith in AI technology right now. It's pretty much in its infancy, but it's interesting to see what it can do. Um, of course, there is, mm, it's not perfect. Uh, I had to go and fix some bugs that it added to the code but it did some interesting cleanups. I've added a buzzer or a passive buzzer, uh, which I wanted to do over the last two parts of the video. And I'll just demonstrate it here. It will beep every second on a normal exposure. So, and in the strip test mode, it will beep to indicate to move your, your sheet of paper across so for the base exposure, of course, you do the whole uh, sheet of paper and then you, you use your mask. So base exposure, now put your mask, move it over one, move it, move it and so forth. And so the, the beeper will beep before it goes on to the next strip. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, kind of useful so you don't have to watch the timer you just have to listen for the beep and then move yeah and uh, there isn't a way to disable the the beeper if that annoys you especially if you're doing a long exposure but I guess we could add that to the code at some point but for now um, it's pretty much up and running uh, that's the whole lot and the code is uh, a little bit more stable uh, I'm sure there's some things to fix but so far uh, it's been working out pretty well for me um, so we'll go on to do the assembly of the box you see it's beeping every second here and we can cancel of course yeah it also beeps when you turn it on and off so Turn it on, 
So it's ready to go. So I'm in the dark room. I'm testing out the timer. I'm going to turn off the lights here and we're going to see how this works. So I have my enlarger set up here. I've just got a basic piece of card. We're in the dark room. I'm going to turn on the, the enlarger just by pushing the focus light here so I can turn that on and off. So we're going to do a strip test. So turn off our focus light onto the next button. We do the we do our base exposure here of eight seconds. And once that eight seconds is done, you will hear a beep. Do our first strip. When you hear the beep, move to the next strip. So it's got one second to move, which is enough if you're holding the car just like this. So it's one stop. So we're waiting for the next stop. Very, very simple. You don't have to look at the timer or anything. You just got to move the card. And we're on to the last one. The very last strip, we don't actually do the sixth strip in the strip test. We don't do it's because it's over because we our base exposure would have done the strip here. So that's pretty much it. Very straightforward. Uh, here is the 3D print. Uh, it's come out quite nice. Uh, the buttons didn't come out as I wanted, but I can see f-stop timer here. Uh, but in the next prototype, I think I might look at that in a different way. So I've assembled the board onto the bottom of the case here. Uh, I just put a knot and a hole in the box. Uh, and I put my buzzer in here and it sits together very, very nicely. So under dark light, uh, I realized this enclosure is quite thin. <laughs> Either you like the effect or not. Um, if I'm printing in black, I don't think I'd have this problem. What's really cool is, I'll turn on the darkroom light here. So here it is. It's so small. It's so handy. I can just bring it up to my, my easel here. And I can have it right beside me and I can control it. I have noticed that the it's hard to determine which buttons are which. Um, that certainly we need some kind of markings on that um, but for for the 3d print I'm pretty happy with it um, but certainly some indication uh, knowing which ones are which buttons to press because it's quite easy to just uh, press the, the wrong button here or to change the exposure instead of hitting the actual execution button uh, however you could certainly put another button here just for that execution button here and certainly solder your your uh, jack in here for your pedal switch if you wanted to there's plenty of room inside the box to add a mod like that um, yeah and also you can do some wireless stuff with it like some logging um, if you want to log all your darkroom act activities uh, with the um, ES ESP32 chip but I might cover that in another video but so far, uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. That's pretty much it. Uh, sure. <laughs> The little timer has turned out really well. It's compact, it's easy to fit in anyone's darkroom, and it's very, very flexible, and you can kind of customize it the way you want. And I might actually add a larger button here just to do the start uh, on the execute as, as such. That might be one of the changes I might make. And I will put in a pedal socket in here, like a jack for a pedal. That's also very simple to do. And I might do a follow-up video if enough people are interested. If you've liked this video, please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to put some comments down below. 
and give me some feedback and if you have made one of these timers I'd love to hear from you I'd love to see some images of what you've done um, if, please do use the Amazon links below it helps out this this small channel it is a small channel it needs all the support it can get so do subscribe or whatever would help um, to grow the channel and it helps me make more content and to do quirky things like this so I hope you've enjoyed it um, and thank you for watching.